Hey everyone, this is Nars again. Um, oh, let me flip the board. I'm um, just doing a video on uh, another game I played at the Cherry Hill Quad. This was against um, this this kid must have been like couldn't have been older than 11 or 12. Um, Charles Dye, he was already in the high 1700s, and um, yeah, I played the black pieces. And um, yeah, let's get started. So uh, he played e4 played uh, C5 Sicilian. Again, this is what I always play in tournaments. Um, once in a while in blitz games, casual games, I'll play E5, but again, I don't know a lot of the openings well enough, like the Rui Lopez and stuff. I just don't know them well enough to uh, play that in tournaments. And the Sicilian I know much better because I've played it in uh, most of my tournament games. He played Knight F F3, played G6, Hyper Accelerated. Um, I think this might have been the first time I, I played Hyper Accelerated in a uh, a tournament game. You'll recall um, in the Philadelphia Chess Congress under 1800 division, I played uh, this move. But that this game took place about a month before that, uh, about a month and a half before that. So um, here he he, uh, he played c4, which is kind of surprising. Um, ultimately, it transposes um, back into the main line of uh, the um, Maroxi binds, actually, in the hyper and the accelerated dragon, but. Um, I just I played uh, knight knight uh, knight c6 and now he transitions back into the main line d4 c takes d4 knight takes d4 knight f6 this is uh, the Gurganitsa system um, knight c3 d6 so I'm delaying um, bishop g7 and you'll see one of the reasons why this very move uh, bishop e3 so this is inaccurate white should play um, Bishop e2 first. The reason why you'll see right away is um, knight g4 um, is attacking this bishop, and the white having this bishop is uh, vastly important in this opening because um, you know it controls the dark squares. And it, once I get my bishop here, my bishop's going to be a monster going down this diagonal, and with no other bishop to oppose it, um, it's just not going to be uh, not going to be good for white. So that's why um, more often uh, knight e2 is played, which prevents my knight from hopping in here. Um, so he doesn't want to give up the um, dark squared bishop. Um, if he moves his queen, I'll just take it, and he'll take back with the queen, and I'll bring my bishop here, attacking this knight twice, and the knight will have to move or trade off. It'll just be good for me. And if he doesn't even move his queen, then I'll take it, doubling his, uh, doubling his pawns. So um, already white's kind of made an inaccuracy, and black's got a slight edge. So in this in this game, uh, um, white plays a uh, bishop here, which isn't the best place for it. Um, actually, um, according to Fritz, uh, queen b6 is is the move that I should have made. Um, which, in retrospect, looking at it, it's kind of obvious. Um, uh, if knight takes knight, bam. If uh, knight takes knight, bam, mate. And um, so that's not not even possible. If uh, and I'm I'm, a, I'm threatening this pawn. Um, if bishop comes back to to um, e3, excuse me, bishop comes back to e3 to defend. Um, I could take it and then take this pawn, or I could just develop my bishop, putting more pressure on this knight. It'd just be uh, really bad news. So I'll remember that if anyone ever plays this again. But um, the move I played wasn't too bad. Um, just wasn't nearly as good. I played queen a5 and um, here white is already feeling a lot of pressure so he, he um, well he's got a few moves. He can move the bishop or he can play knight. Um, knight takes uh, c6. So he plays knight takes c6. Now I got two moves. I thought about it for a while and decided to take the bishop. And um, White's having some trouble here. If the game just goes on normally, he's going to lose. So he decides to create some complications with the uh, knight takes d5. Um, you know, threatening uh, threatening to come here if I take this knight. But I don't really see how that could possibly be better for White. So I took. He checked me. King d7. Knight takes a8. Now, I'm pretty much going to um, win this knight. Um, 
one thing I decided to do. I don't want his queen coming in here, threatening to take this pawn with mating stuff. So I played queen a5 check, which um, I'm proud to say uh, the computer um, agreed with me after extensive analysis. Well, actually, after only a few seconds, it saw that that's the best move. But um, the more I thought about it, the more I realized it was the best move. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, like, I love when uh, Fritz loves me. But um, so he he doesn't want to trade queens. That'd just be bad. So he plays king e2, and uh, now I play bishop g7. Which actually, um, queen c5 was way better according to Fritz. Um, well, that's threatening mate. Yeah, queen c5. Again, I missed the, the best move, and I played a second-rate move, bishop g7. But I'm still winning um, pretty decisively here. Queen c2, um, bishop a6 I played, um, just pinning this pawn. f3, um, knight e5, again, hitting this pawn. Um, King D1, uh, bringing this bishop back into the game, and uh, here I thought about not even taking the knight, just being cute and maybe playing rook to um, B8, just leaving the knight there, you know, feeling impotent, but I decided, when in doubt, just take the piece, especially when you've got a dominating position. So um, here uh, my opponent surprised me again by playing C5. Um, and uh, played bishop takes f1. Hey, I'm up material. Trade off pieces. Rook takes f1. And now uh, I took the pawn with my queen, just trading more pieces. But according to Fritz, uh, queen b b5 is even better, significantly better. Um, I guess. Oh well, queen b5 would be uh, hitting the, hitting the rook, so we'd have to lose time moving it, and then I could bring my other rook maybe to b8. Um, but I just, this this was game 30, and I just thought, let me just not have to think that much, and um, and I just took the uh, took the pawn, and queen takes, d takes. But now I have got a longer road ahead of me because uh, two minor pieces versus a rook, it's winning usually, but it's more difficult. Um, king e2, um, move my king over to c7, b3. And uh, here I played a uh, c4, getting rid of my double pawns. Um, he doesn't have to take, but you know then I get a advanced pass pawn. So he took knight takes rook a c1, knight d6. I know I'm playing through these moves kind of fast, but YouTube only gives me uh, 11 minutes, and I don't want to make two videos for one game. I feel like I'll lose uh, I'll lose some fans. Um, which is a shame. Uh, there's a site chesslecture.com, which has a lot of um, a lot of lectures from uh, you know some of the top masters, international masters, and grandmasters. Um, and sometimes they'll spend literally 45, 50 minutes on a game, which sounds like a large chunk of your life. But you know you could watch one a day, and you'll you'll become a vastly improved player. And you know they're entertaining, they're informative, and these guys know way more what they're talking about than I do. But um, I think, you know, I'm providing a good service here because, uh, you know, I'm kind of showing an insight into how, like, the amateur's mind works, and I'm trying not to stay amateur. I'm trying to get to at least expert by uh, the end of 2010, so we'll see how that goes. Um, at, during this game, I'm, um, this is a few months ago, I'm rated about uh, 1,700. So, um, king e3, rook b8, rook c2. I'm going to just gun through the rest of these moves pretty quick, pointing out stuff I, I may have missed. Um, here I play e5. Not the most, not the most accurate, but not that bad. I'm blocking in my bishop, but I want to um, restrain his pawns and probably plan to bring my bishop to here. Oh, and also I have the threat um, if he just plays the natural doubling move to um, play um, bishop h6, forking, um, skewering his king and rook. Um, so he sees that. I mean, he's a good player. Um, he just got in trouble in the opening. He plays rook d1, rook d8, and. Um, just gonna go through the rest of the moves pretty quick. Um, I, I, the, this knight c8, just not. I, I make a lot of inaccuracies, but as I said in my other um, um, my other video, the most important thing is not really screwing up really really bad. So you, you can, especially if you're up material, you can afford to kind of screw around a little bit. It's not the best. You want to find the best, most forcing moves. But um, you know, as you can see, I'm definitely not. 
playing the sharpest here, but I'm not screwing up. I'm not losing my advantage. I'm not losing a piece. And here is some. Um, uh, I got in serious time trouble. Wasn't able to write down the moves anymore. But after this, I won pretty quickly. Basically, my goal was just um, advancing the C pawn. Um, you know, hitting the rooks, uh, threatening checks if the king came onto the D file. And um, eventually, I got my bishop in the game. He had to trade uh, one of his rooks for uh, one of my minor pieces. I kept the C pawn. Ended up uh, actually, I don't think I did end up winning uh, queen the C pawn. He won the C pawn, but I was up a piece and I won pretty easily about uh, 15, 20 moves later. So uh, hope this video was uh, instructive. Um, just a nice little trap in the opening that um, won the game for me uh, pretty early on. Though obviously I had to work for it against a strong player. Okay, uh, thanks for watching.